You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. It's, it's, it's hard at times. You know, becoming successful can definitely be lonely because you isolate yourself from a lot of things, a lot of pe many people sometimes because you just have to stay focused. Like my days, a lot of people, I don't have a lot of freedom, you know, I, like sometimes I feel like I'm, all, I'm not in a jail, but like I have a routine from the moment I wake up, from the moment I go to sleep. There were a few things changed in the middle of the competition that, that, that I was unhappy with, that I spoke up loud about. Uh, Eddie wasn't happy about that. Uh, he felt like I called him a cheater. He made a fake documentary film showing that I didn't shake his hand. So I clearly did. I did shake his hand. And he's been salty about that for years now, since 2017. Um, and he's been dragging that along for, for for many, many, many years. Since 2017, basically, he hasn't got over that yet. He has said himself online that he would have fought me injured. And I'm tired of waiting for him to be get ready. So he has said it once. So back up your words, Eddie. You always talk, you talk about that. Back up your words. If you get injured again, fight me injured. I'm not waiting any, any longer. I'm not waiting longer. Just get ready, train smart. Let's fight in March. I don't care injured or not, it's not my fault. Just train smart, Eddie, get ready and let's fight. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Halfa Bjornsson. Haftor. Halfa. Awesome. Yes. How are you, big man? Good, good. How are you, man? Really good, thank you. First of all, thanks for taking your time out and uh, coming on the podcast. You're a man of many talents, world strongman, actor, boxer, world record holder. It's great, great achievements. I've met your father, who's actually bigger than you, which is um, unbelievable. I didn't think anybody could actually be bigger than you, but first and foremost, how are you, brother? Firstly, thank you so much for having me. Absolute pleasure being on your po podcast. Uh, and yeah, I am uh, good, a bit tired. Been training extremely hard here in uh, Scotland with my coach Bill Nelson. Everything is going well. I'm in a mid preparation camp before my fight against Eddie Hall. That hopefully happens in Mars if everything goes well. Um, that's the plan, at least as of today. Uh, it was supposed to happen this September, but Eric got injured, so um, it looks it looks like he is healing well. So um, the plan is to fight in March. So I'm in mid prep now to prepare myself for that. Yeah, like I say, mate, it's going to be a mega fight. And shout out to my brother Barry Nelson. I can't believe you're actually sitting on Erdrits. Um, four from Game of Thrones is sitting on Erdrits. A quite a surreal experience, brother. But I always go back to the start with my guests. Where you grew up and how it all began. I, uh, from Iceland, grew up in a small town called Akranes, lived there until I was uh, 12 years old, just a normal life, normal kid, um, spent my summers um, at the farm, my grandfather had a farm um, for over 30 years, so I spent many summers there. Growing up, and uh, we moved to uh, close to the capital when I was 12 years old. Uh, we moved to a place called Kobor, very close to Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. And uh, yeah, lived there my whole life, normal life. I, I can't say I lived any unusual life. It's just a normal family, lived a normal life. I, um, as a kid, I... Um, played basketball, that was my real hobby and uh, I really wanted to become professional in that sport, had some injuries growing up, uh, my right um, foot was bothering me a few times, so I took a break in basketball when I was around uh, 16, 17 years old, um, started to lift weights, I was always a big fan of um, muscles as a kid. So I used to do push-ups, 
chin-ups, sit-ups, daily. I remember myself even at the farm with uh, where 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 I spent many summers. I remember myself um, waking up and just doing push-ups because you know I, I just thought if I do a lot of push-ups, I will, uh, my muscles will, will will grow. So I just remember myself just doing like I don't even know how many. I just did like woke up. I was I was light, so I could easily do like. 50, 100, 100 push-ups, you know, in, in, in one, 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 one set up sitting, you know. I did them every day. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, when I took the break from basketball, I started to lift weights seriously, grew very fast. My muscles, like, I, 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 like, I just, I saw them just packing on me. So I just, like, I never went back to basketball because of that, because of the, uh, the addiction I got from seeing my body change, I got addicted to that and uh, um, didn't really know where that was going at the time. I didn't really know my plans, my future. I was young, I was 17, 18. I uh, had no clue what I wanted to do in life. Worked as a six, worked as a Six, six security guy in a bank. That was my main job. Um, and um, yeah, when I was 19 years old, 19, yeah, 19, I believe, I competed in my first ever strongman competition and um, did rather well, I would, I, would, I would say. In my first event in the show, I played second. In the second event of, of the show, I broke an Icelandic record carry, carrying a Husevel stone. So I was just like, well, okay, I'm doing quite well here. I, maybe this is something I could do. And I remember it wasn't a whole lot, but after the show, you know, you you got some, you know, some money and it's like, wait a minute, I do this and I can get paid. I thought to myself, oh, this is fun. So I took it more seriously, and I, I thought to myself, if I do well in the shows in Iceland, I could possibly travel the world and compete and get paid. So I thought to myself, I'm just going to give it my all. I'm just going to gonna go and start training the events, uh, take my food seriously, um, and just give it my go, like, like try. And I tried, and... Slowly but surely, I started to do better. Yeah. Was there anybody else in your family who done that sort of thing, or was it watching from the old school? Because John Paul Sigmarsson was a mega star and um, from Iceland back in the day. He won the strongman three or four times. Like, was he? Did you know? Is that who you kind of inspired to once you kind of moving through the ranks at the world at the strongman competitions? Yeah. So no one in my family ever did strongman or any really sport uh to be honest my dad was a very strong guy um and is as well as my grandfather um but yeah i would say definitely like john paul uh magnus or magnuson those guys like 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 they uh opened the path for the for the younger generation for the new generation to to um First and foremost, believe, believe that we as a small nation, we are able and, and, and we can become the best. They open that door for us because it usually just starts here. Like you have to believe in yourself. And if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. I'm, I'm a big believer in that. Yeah, same. See, when you were doing that, though, I, I used to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger videos and he used to say, I didn't want to just be in the mountains yodeling. My mum and dad just wanted me to stay there, have kids and stuff. Did you ever feel that from yourself when you wanted to do strongman competitions that you were, did family or friends ever say you're making a mistake, get a normal job, this and that? Was there any negative words towards you doing it at the start? Definitely the beginning because the, the year I decided that I wanted to try to go for strongman like, like early on, I uh, quit school. Decided I'm, I'm just gonna quit school. It's just it's it's it's, it's, 
it's in the way. It's taking too much time. I want to focus my focus on my nutrition, my sleep, um, my training, and recovery. Those things I just want. I was just obsessed with getting better and stronger. So I quit my job. I not my job. My my, my quit uh, school, and. Um, Everything went into Strongman at, at, at a very early stage. So yeah, for sure, my family was just like, Thor, are you sure you want to do this? Um, is this the right decision? Is, is this smart? You're throwing away everything. You're f- throwing away your future. Like many people believe, you should you should stay in school. Like I definitely recommend all kids to do. Like I'm one of the few that, that it actually did work out. Um, it worked out okay for myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting on this podcast. It certainly has, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I just, there was something inside me that, that just told me that you, like, follow your heart, uh, follow your dream. Not that becoming the world's strongest man at that stage in my life was the, my dream. I just, I had the passion to do something different, not to do like everyone else, like stay in school, do this and that and that. I wanted to be different. I wanted to um, be the best in something. And I, I believed, like there was a small, small belief inside of myself early early on in my, my, my career that I, I believed and I believed that I could like make a living and I could do well for myself in this, I just had to work hard and I wanted to work hard in those areas. Like that was my passion. So I thought to myself, well, if I just eat well, sleep well, train hard, which I already enjoy, I can get paid. That was my, that honestly, like a lot of people say you should never like do it because of that and that. But that was my, that was my motivation because like, I'd rather do that and get paid than work in a bank as a security guy. That's just a fact. Yeah. Did anybody ever try and rob the bank when you were there? No, well, the bank was safe. The bank was safe. <laughs> I wouldn't fucking rob the bank, mate, if you were standing at the door anyway. <laughs> where did you get that? Where did you get that belief from? Where does that come from? That's a, that's a very, very, very good question. Um, um, you know what? Um, it's a very good question. Um, I have a great support around myself. I remember um, even during my basketball days, my dad would drive me, pick me up, watch all the games, um, be involved in everything he could be involved in. And that, um, um, uh, I guess that it, it helps, you know, a lot. Um, you, um, you, um, and also you want to make the people around you proud. Um, they're helping you, they're supporting you, and you feel obligated to, to do well, uh, like in, 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 in some areas, in some ways. Um, like, like you just mentioned, you know, my dad is here today. I'm, I'm 32 years old and uh, actually turning 33 in this month. <laughs> uh, he's still supporting me still here with me um, and um, you know that itself is a, it's a huge motivation for myself yeah having the backing from family members or friends mm-hmm. like, because I'd imagine it would get a lonely journey for me like the, the constant training the eating like the, the constant self doubt the everything that comes with it but if you've got that support network there then if you already believe you're number one or unstoppable, having that support network mm-hmm. just fucking raises you to the stratosphere where nothing's going to stop you. Like even your dad, Taylor, who I've spoken to, is a great man. You can mm-hmm. see how proud he is of you. Like you're kind of everything you've achieved at 32 is kind of unbelievable mm-hmm. from Iceland. Like taking the risk and taking a chance. That's why it's important for people watching to understand that you can achieve anything with a strong belief system, but you have to work like fuck to go and go and chase those dreams to make it happen put that into existence like do you still feel that like because I know how you talk about your family all the time how close you are with them that network of when you're not working you're with your family like is that a major impact on your life to keep you grounded yeah absolutely I'm I'm a big family guy 
Um, and uh, but the road to success is also lonely sometimes. Um, for example, I'm here for almost two months in a in a in a camp uh, without my wife and son and daughter. Um, I miss them de- miss them deeply, but you know I have to think like I'm doing this for them. I'm building a f- the few. I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, like um, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it f- as much as for them as as well as for me myself. You know I wanna make sure you know um, they are taken care of, and uh, it's 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 hard at times. You know becoming successful can definitely be lonely because you isolate yourself from a lot of things, a lot of pe- many people sometimes because you just have to stay focused. Like my days, a lot of people, I don't have a lot of freedom, you know, I, like sometimes I feel like I'm, all, I'm not in a jail, but like I have a routine from the mo- moment I wake up, from the moment I go to sleep. I wake up, I eat my breakfast, I train and, you know, there's this schedule throughout the day, every single day, and I always go to sleep at 10 p.m. So I get my body ready the next day. And this is just what I have to do to become better. I want to become as good as possible as I can become in anything I do. And that's the mindset, mindset that, that I have. I have a great coach that's willing to help me, and I have to take the advances of that and try to become as good as possible within the time frame I have. Yeah, that's important though, like to be the better version that you were yesterday, to keep improving, like your success leaves clues, bed early, up early, same routine, but a healthy routine. Like mm. your results, obviously one in the strong man, was it 2018? Mm. Like you were second, third, third, second, like so many times. But this, so, so, I believe 99% of success is failure. I believe you've got to keep failing. But the thing about yourself is you never fucking gave up. You never quit. Where does that also come from? Like, was that just a, a belief that your dad ingrained into you? Or was it something that you'd learned through the years never to give up, to finish second and third? And like people throw in the till after one failure. Mm-hmm. Second and third isn't a failure, mm-hmm. but it's so close where it can break people so much to go, I just don't think I'm good enough. Mm-hmm. But for years, you kept working at it. Where did you get that, I'm not going to quit mentality until I succeed? Mm-hmm. Probably a combination of a lot of things. Um, it probably helps a lot, like you said. You have a, I have a good s- a network around me, good uh, support from family that, that believes in me. And then just the mindset that I have that I, I always be- truly believe that I could become the best and just, I, I never gave up, no matter what. I wanted to achieve my goals, and I kept fighting, kept fighting. Every winner, every successful pe- person has failed in their lives. Um, that's just facts, but the reason why they became so success- successful because they never gave up. Yeah. What was your first strongman competition? Was it 2012? 2009. 2009 you started, so how old were you then? 19. Fucking only a kid, man. Like, what, where did you finish then? Fourth. And what was the hype then? Did that, was that, did that change your life, that? No, I, I competed in Iceland. And, um, wait, um, I'm so... So 2000... Wait, wait, wait. wait. I might be, the thing is, I'm so bad with timings. Mm-hmm. I might have been 21, actually. Yeah. I might have been 21. My, my bad, my bad. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been 21. But anyways, age is just a number. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that didn't change my life, no. That was just the beginning. That okay. was just the beginning. And then, but, but, but soon, soon though, like um, soon my life changed. It, it it didn't like like because I took it very seriously. I um, I made progress quite fast. Yeah. How's your? What was if? What year did you finish second? Two thousand. 
12. I played second few times. Yeah. I played, uh, I placed th uh, third uh, four, 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 four times and I th second three times, if I remember right, and then first ones. How was that then, c like coming, coming second? How was that feeling for you, working all year round, well, working your whole life to get to where you are and then finishing second? Was there ever a moment in your mind that you weren't good enough or you were going to quit or was it just straight back to the gym again and... and fight for that first place just right away to the gym I never thought for a moment I wasn't good enough because I knew I was good enough it was always just like to be honest with you it mattered sometimes half a second or less uh, the first time I played second was in 2014 against the greatest strongman of all time Citroën Savikas and I made some silly mistakes that year but I didn't give up. I knew that, you know, if I was that close, I can definitely become the world's youngest man. If I'm, if I'm that close against a Citroën Savikas, the greatest of all time. And at that year, those years, 2014, he was strong. So I definitely knew that I, I, I could become the best. What sacrifices do you need to make to become the strongest man on the planet? You know, you have to sacrifice friendships, uh, time with family, um, social network networking, you know, there's a lot of things you have to sacrifice. Um, mostly, like, like mostly, like times with friends, and and then obviously family times as well. I, 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 like, for example, now I, I wish I wish I was with my wife and son and my daughter, but like I have to stay focused and. Um, they can't be here, but I have to be here. So I have to do what has to be done. Uh -huh. How do you deal with that then, being away from family? Like, obviously, we're on the road quite a lot and I have to be away from my kids, but I'm only away for like four or five days. Then I'm home for maybe three, four days. And then, and I just, in my mind, it's to give them more opportunities that I didn't have. Like, your son is at 26th of September, his birthday. Yes. My son's at 27th. That's no how I way, know that, no yeah, way. yeah, James. But I seen you with a picture of your son, and he yeah. already looks massive. Yeah, he's big. Like, uh, is he going to be a future uh, world strongman? You know what? Uh, I get this question a lot, and um, I'm going to support my kid in no, in in anything that well, whatever he wants to do. But you know, you know, as a parent, you can you know kind of choose where they start at, and I'll probably start with him in. You know, swimming classes, gymnastic, something, something, something that's just good for him as a kid. Um, if he has the passion for strongman, I'm never going to say no, but, you know, it wouldn't be my preference. No, it wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't be my preference. Yeah. I would want him to rather just stay in school and do basketball, mm -hmm. maybe football, soccer. Is that because it's such a tough industry? It's a it's a tough sport, um, and um, what yes, you have to put your body through as well. Put your body through a lot. Being that heavy isn't healthy long term, so I wouldn't want that for my son. But I would never ever say that he couldn't do anything. If he wants to do something, I'm going to support him no matter no matter what. Yeah. How does um? Kid from a uh, kid from Iceland, then got offered a part in Game of Thrones, the biggest series of all time, like watched by hundreds of millions, like worldwide. Like no acting experience. Did you ever visualise that? Did you ever think of that that you were going to be an actor? Did, was that a, a, any part of your plan? How did that come into existence? I never ever thought that I would become an actor. Like you said, I had no acting experience at all. And during those years, my English wasn't even that good. For some reason, uh, speaking English was a challenge for myself in the beginning of my strongman years. But over the years, I became, became better and better and better. Uh, so like, I was obviously nervous. Like I thought to myself, fuck, I have to have speaking roles, I have to talk, memorize things. And like, am I gonna be good enough? Is it gonna look okay? Like a lot of these things you think about. Self-doubt? Yeah, self-doubt. You're doing it for the first time, like anything. It doesn't matter what you're doing in life. If you're doing it for the first time, 
I'd be surprised if someone out there listening is like, that's nothing. <laughs> like, if you haven't done it before, you, 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 you get nervous. You get nervous. That's just, that's just like normal. <laughs> Absolutely normal, guys. Um, so I definitely got nervous. Um, luckily, luckily for me, as an unexperienced actor, I didn't have many lines. I had very few lines. So that was, that was nice. Killed a lot of people, though. <laughs> I, I killed a lot of people. It was a lot of... Um, a lot of physical stuff doing, the physical stuff that I do, which was bad for me because um, I, I'm good to, good in those uh -huh. areas. I'm able to move my body weight. I'm uh, able to learn those things fast. So that was like easier for me to do. So I was, I was, I was a good beginning of my acting career. Yeah. Very good, very good. How did, did you know how big that show would have been? Did you know that was going to be a worldwide success? Yeah, so I, 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 I came in in season four, so it was already quite already, success. al al already successful. Um, and I was watching the show when I actually when I when I when I heard the news that they wanted to see me, wanted to um, get me in for audition. Um, I was watching the show, so I was like, "What?" Like I I didn't believe it. I, I thought it was some kind of prank, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> See the the training you done for the fighting scenes. Yeah. Do you think that's benefited you get into the boxing? Uh, yeah, probably in small degrees. You know, boxing you have to be on your toes. You have to uh, um, move very well. But you know, maybe in small degrees. But but boxing is very technical, technical and. Um, extremely difficult sport and there's so much to learn like it's um it's um but it definitely probably did in, in small ways yeah how do people then treat you and world strongmans when you become a, a successful actor when you become you're basically becoming a superstar like does people want to be your friend or they kind of do you, a lot of jealousy because it becomes because, uh, because of what you're achieving also i think it's like both some people become very jealous and some people want to obviously become your friends. Um, so it's like both, both I would say. Um, yeah. So 2007, they say, was the, the best finals ever on the Strongman with your, you and, was it Eddie Hall, you and Eddie Hall? Mm -hmm. You lost with one point? Yep. How was, how was that feeling? Because that was the closest you'd, you'd come to winning it. I was closer. I was quite close there, yeah. But you know, there was there were years before where I when I was like 2014, half a point versus Sitano uh, Um That year was 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 quite frustrating for me, yeah, to say at least. Um, um, there were a few things changed in the middle of the competition that that, that I was unhappy with. I spoke up loud about, uh, Eddie wasn't happy about that. Uh, he felt like I called him a cheater. He made a fake documentary film showing that I didn't shake his hand. So I clearly did, I did shake his hand. And he's been salty about that for years now, since 2017. Um, and he's been dragging that along for, for, for many, many, many years, since 2017, basically. He hasn't got over that yet, that I was unhappy with the ways how, how things were, were, were we're um, done that year, but you know it's just it's, it's competition. You know, I wanted to win, he wanted to win. Um, like, call me liar if you want, but but things were changed in the fucking competition. That's just facts. Um, people know that he knows it. Um, they make it look like it was the Viking press that was the biggest issue, when in fact that wasn't the biggest issue. Um, and um, um, so that documentary that Ari, Ari, Ari posted and Giants Live that was that was posted by Ari Hall, just him, and official Stroman page, which is owned by uh, Ari Hall and Colin Price, his best friend. I believe it. I believe it was also posted on maybe Giants Live page, but it was taken down there fast. And I truly believe it was taken down because the world's man uh, people 
were unhappy. That's just my thoughts. I just wonder why they took it down. But it's, it's still up on uh, Ari, 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 Ari's page, but only there. No, no, on, on other pages, it's, 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 it's up, up, up yet. It's on his page. He wasn't happy with uh, how I... Uh, I made a post, basically, saying that I wasn't happy with how things were run that year. I took the post half an hour late, 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 later because I felt like I acted, I acted um, um, fast. I thought I should have thought things through better. Um, but then I've moved on. He hasn't. He's still salty about that. He's still unhappy with that. I've said congratulations. I said congratulations back in 2017. I feel like he wants me to say it again, but I'm not doing that. I shook his hand back in 2017. Move on. Let's fight. Let's finish this. After the, after the fight, let's move on and just forget about this. Uh, it's, it's, it's affecting him um, more than anyone else and it's damaging his when when he is damaging his win more than anyone else by talking about it so much, uh, he's making people talk about it and he's making people doubt it. He's making people he's making people doubt his win by constantly mentioning it. So, Ed, if you're watching this, just move on for yourself. Um, let's fight. I'm excited. I'm training hard. I hope you're training hard as well. And uh, soon, you'll feel this fist. I can't wait. Is that where your beef started, 2017? Uh, it started... It started... Yeah, the main beef started then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. We were okay before that, you know. Um, we were... Um, there was nothing. Yeah, we were okay before that, but yeah, they started. It started there. Did you not have a stroke on the 2017 as well? 2017, um, I had not a stroke. A lot of people think it was a stroke. I had Bell's palsy, which can uh, come because of stress. 2017, I had a lot of things going on in my life. Um, my daughter was taken away from me. So uh, that was a big, big stress in my life. So um, um, and other things, probably, you know, the loss as well. And it was just a lot of things that happened that year. So I got Bell's palsy, which is basically half of your face gets paralyzed and uh, yeah so were you still okay to why did they let you carry on the tournament I got I got I got Bell's Palsy um, when was it a um, few that, yeah that, 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 that was even before the World Series man I got Bell's Palsy um, was it yeah Right before Europe Strongest Man. So probably, yeah, probably like when I think about it, I haven't thought about this so, 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 yeah. I probably got it just because of the stress not seeing my daughter, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and um, that was right before, I think a week or so before, or a few days before Europe Strongest Man 2017, which I, by the way, won. Yeah, because I seen your interviews and the lips down and stuff, and that was the World Strongman. I seen that in 2017 as well. So, yep, yep. are you still able to carry on and do everything as normal as well? So, the doctors recommend you to rest completely when that happens, but I'm just not that kind of per like. Don't listen. Yeah, sometimes I don't listen. <laughs> and uh, they told me to rest, but I was just like. I can't rest. I have a competition coming up. 
So uh, I competed, even though they recommended me to rest. And that's probably one of the reasons why it took me so long to recover from it. And I am still recovering, actually, and it's 2021, yeah. almost 2022. So after that event then, after all the kind of emotions and everything through it, like, what was the game plan for you then? Was it to take rest or go straight back in? Because you won it a year later. So what was, going, what was that year all about then once you came so close again? and going through everything from the media and all the bullshit to then winning it in 2018. How was that year training? Should I tell you a crazy, crazy fact? Yeah. I never really rested. I, I always trained. I trained like a maniac for 10 years straight. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. I, um, I might have maximum rested for a few days back in the gym. I never took a vacation rest or anything I just trained like a maniac and that's probably one of the things that my wife probably hates the most about me is that we never have vacation I, I, I keep telling her well I'm young now I'm uh, doing well I have to like fish well now while I can I have to work hard now while I can you know now I'm doing well for us now I'm building our future now I have to work hard we'll rest when I'm older yeah see I say all that shit as well but Sometimes I think to myself, I try and convince myself because I try and keep busy. The busier I am, the less the demons in the head tell me things like, do you feel that also, like you also have to keep busy because if you don't, do you battle yourself with any mental health issues? I probably do without me even knowing. I probably do because I feel the happiest when I'm the busiest. When, I'm, when, I, have a, when I have a schedule, when I'm training my ass off, <sighs> I feel the happiest. When I'm on a vacation, sitting around doing nothing, uh, eating junk food maybe and whatever, I get depressed. I feel anxiety. Um, I feel like I'm getting behind. I feel like like I'm wasting my time. So even on a vacation, if I go to a vacation, still training. Yeah, I'm still training. <laughs> <laughs> so it's never really a fucking holiday. No. Yeah. It's crazy that though, isn't it? But then again, how can you judge it when you've achieved so much at such a young age as well? That yeah. do you feel that that you feel as if you're wasting time if you you take a couple hours rest or a day off? Do you no, feel as if you like obviously I take day offs? You yeah. know, like 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 the rest is, just is important. rest is important. But when I'm talking about vacation, I'm talking about like weeks, like yeah. like, like like two three weeks. I I I rarely ever do that, uh, but. As you get older, you appreciate the rest more. So I'm going to try to be better at that as well. Obviously, having my son, having my daughter, you know, I really have to think about them as well, my wife. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be better at that in the coming years, hopefully after the fight against Eddie. But that's the thing as well. Like you finish some, you finish some goal, something else comes mm. up and you're like, fuck, I have to be pre <laughs> prepared for that. Like I feel uh, like I never can take time off. Uh, but I want to though. In my mind right now, I want to do it. I want to take time off and I want to like treat my family, treat my wife, treat my, like just go and just do nothing for two weeks, three weeks. Hopefully I'm able to kick myself in the head and do that mm -hmm. after this fight. But that's a luxury to have, to have so many job opportunities to have, keeping so busy, like that's a sacrifice to be one of the greatest as the sacrifice of not spending time with family, the sacrifice of not spending time with friends, that to be the best, you've got to do what the rest can't do, and that's to spend a lot of time alone, mm -hmm. to work hard, to progress, to because I believe when I'm on my own, I think differently, I come up with better ideas differently. If I'm surrounded with people, it's just noise, mm -hmm. constant noise, and it's, everything's kind of muddled up, but yeah. to be the best, you've like you say, you've just got to fucking sacrifice until you get to a level, but for me, looking at you, I don't think you could ever fucking stop. I think you'll be constantly, you'll be working on Game of Thrones season 45 and when you're in your 70s if it comes back, but it's, um, it's unbelievable what you're achieving, but when you won in 2018, how was that feeling? Because you broke all sorts of records. You won the European. You won the Arnold Schwarzenegger. What's that? What was that competition? So I won. I won everything I competed in that yeah. year. I won um, the World Series man. I won Euro Series man. I won. Classic. Yep. I won uh, Arnold Classic in uh, Ohio. I won World Ultimate Strongman. And I won also Ice Ice Series man. So all the big shows that competed in that year. I won, and those were the biggest shows that year that 
anyone could compete at. And that's very hard to do. You see guys, um, they win one show, and that's great, and that's, that's awesome. You win the World Series, and that's great. But going from one show to another show, winning that, you have to be very good to do that. Because, okay, a strongman can be very good at five events, and you would be lucky and get your best five events in that show. But to be able to go from a show to a show, to a show to a show, and win them all against all the best guys, that's something that very few athletes can, can do. Only handful of guys in the world has done. We, I, I can talk. I, I can, I can like Maris Putskinovsky has done that. He actually has never won even. He, he even like, he's talked about as one of the best ever, but he has never won the Arnold Summit Classic. But he, though he won, like he won the worlds. He won a lot of other titles, you know. Uh, but he never won Arnold Classic. We talk about uh, Brian Shaw, known as one of the best. Uh, he won the Arnolds, he won the World Series Man and, and other big shows as well. He obviously couldn't compete at the Eurostar's Man because he's not from Europe. Um, then we talk about uh, Citron Savikas, who is known as the best, best ever. Uh, he has won like multiple shows as well. So it's only a handful of guys that have ever done that that has go, gone from a show to a show to a show and just won it. Why is that? Because it's extremely difficult. Why is it difficult? Because you have to be so good in so many different events. Tell me this, when you won all those events, did you ever feel satisfied? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was very happy with 2018, obviously. But you want to keep going. That's just the person I am. Even though I won everything, I wanted to keep going because I'm a winner. I'm not a quitter. And I kept going. I went into 2019 um, and um, did well that year as well. Um, won Arnold Summer Classic, won Eurostocks Man. Um, and then I went into 2020 just competed at the Arnold's when the COVID hit and then obviously I decided to uh, I broke the world world record in deadlift 501 kilograms under weird conditions um, uh, I was supposed to fly to, to Dubai that year to lift the weight but because of COVID and everything in lockdown the promoters uh, asked me if I wanted to do it back home in Iceland for the people at home watching and just live streaming it, making it available for 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 millions of people to view, and it was it was actually very successful. A lot of people watched it. A lot, a lot of people tuned in, um, and 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 I and I pulled five hundred one. I would have loved to do it in a different uh, situation, but um, it wasn't in my hands. COVID hit us I was in the peaks of my life there and I wanted to do it and I did it why did you choose that world record to beat was that because Eddie Hall had that one or was it uh, to be honest with you it's a good world record 501 is a lot of weight but also just to poke him a bit you know as well <laughs> just, just, just to show him just to show him you know uh, that he can be a bit dramatic sometimes showing that he almost passed away and died that, that day People can do it without dying. And I did it with a smile on my face, put the weight down, and um, walked away healthy. Was training the back the next, next, next day. Nothing like the achievement that he has done by lifting 500 kilograms was remarkable, great. Uh, but, but let's be honest, I'm a little bit dramatic, you know, a little bit dramatic. But it was great though. Do you feel as if you could have lifted more? That day, I truly believe, I feel like I could have lived more. Um, but that was also like one of the reasons, like I just like, I felt like 501 was, um, was just like, um, um, just a teasing. Why, why do more? There's no need to do more. It's more than 500. Okay. I'm not here to, 
make it impossible for others to break the record. I want the next generation to beat the world record. I want others to have. I want. I want others to have the opportunity to beat my world record. And um, there's a lot of strong guys out there that can. And I truly believe that in the next few years, there's someone going to come and beat the world record. Eddie Hall didn't take the world record lightly. He made a lot of accusations saying that there was refs in your pockets. Um, it should have been done in front of fans and stuff like that. Like, what, how does, does that kind of, can you not enjoy that moment? Or is it kind of, well, say what you've got to say? It didn't affect me. Um, he can say all he wants. Um saying that the ref was in my pocket is absolutely nonsense. We had one of the best referees in the whole world, most respected referee in the whole world, who is the referee at the World Series Man, referee at the Alderson Classic, uh, the best referee that you can ever ask for. And you could just watch the lift itself. Like, how can he How can he cheat that? It was live streamed. How can it be cheat? Every single plate was weight live streamed. It's not, it's, it, it isn't possible to cheat it in any way. It's, it's, it's not possible. For him saying it is, you know, in my opinion, a bit childish of him. Um, but he can have his, uh, his opinions, you know. Um, that's fine. It's not going to affect me. Like, I'm a fully grown man. Like, say whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah. These are both winners, so you can see where the conflict comes. Like, obviously, he's won it 2017. You've won it 2018. Then broke his world record. Like, do you feel as if, like, his nose has been put out a joint a bit where that's where you're being targeted to then the boxing fight is eventually happening? Yeah, I mean, um, the boxing fight is definitely happening because of the beef between me and Eddie. It's real. Yeah, it's real. It's really real. I dislike him and he dislikes me. He wants to knock me out. I want to knock him out. And that's why I truly believe that people want to see this fight. Because I truly believe that he's doing anything in his power to train as hard as possible. He's probably training right now. Uh, and I'm doing everything in my power to to be ready. I'm sacrificing my time with my family to be here to train. Uh, to be in the best condition I can be in before the fight with the best coach I can possibly find in my opinion Billy Nelson with a, like yeah like there's nothing else I could do to get myself in a better place for this fight how, how did it start how did the who called to out first for the boxing match so uh, after the 501 I called him out there wasn't discussions before, but um, I called him out. And that was that. Now here we are, because he was supposed to, supposed to fight in September, but he pulled the bicep, the, the bicep tour. Yeah, he, he uh, I think he tore it during a sparring session. Is that right? I How's that so. feeling then, to be training hard and then everybody talking about the fight, world headlines, sacrificing family time as well to then? It's... it's to, I mean, obviously super frustrating. And he has said himself online that he would have fought me injured. And I'm tired of waiting for him to be get ready. So he has said it once. So back up your words. You always talk, you talk about that. Back up your words. If you get injured again, fight me injured. I'm not waiting any, any longer. I'm not waiting longer. Just get ready. Train smart. Let's fight in March. I don't care injured or not. It's not my fault. Just train smart, Eddie. Get ready and let's fight. What was it like the first time you started boxing? Uh, <laughs> I thought I would have a heart attack. <laughs> like seriously, I thought I would fucking die. Uh, and I, I mean, I mean, I still feel like that sometimes. <laughs> Obviously, it, it has gotten a lot better, a lot better. Like I'm like sparring three times a week right now. I'm able to spar. Um, and feel good and um, get hit and hit back and um, it, it's it's getting a lot better um, I remember the first time Billy said to me Thor skip for 12 minutes straight <laughs> 12 minutes straight <laughs> fuck 
But you know, you get used to it. Uh-huh. You get used to it. Are you getting used to the the intensity of it, the movement? Like it's a totally different ball game. How do you feel it different from strongman? To, what do you think's harder actually, strongman or boxing? Training wise, boxing. Yeah. 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 Do you feel as if it's got easier that you've lost more weight? Yeah, for sure. Probably. I mean, I mean, I. The thing is, it's kind of. My memory in the strongman maybe was easier because I, I'd already done it for 10 years and my body got used to it, used to the movements and everything, and I was so good at it, so it became easier. When I started the boxing journey, every time after each session, my knuckles, my wrist, my body would be in agony because I, my body was not, just not used to hitting the backs. And But now, you know, I've been doing this for a year and a half, you know, slightly more, and I'm more used to it. My hands are not in pain anymore. Uh, my body feels better. I'm, I'm recovering better. I'm learning more. The reason why I've, I've done these exhibition matches is so I can know how to peak for a fight, learn from my mistakes, do better. And that's, that's, how, that's what it's all about, you know, is to learn and get better. Um, and it definitely feels harder. And I, the reason why might be because of I'm so new to the sport. Uh, how did you feel with your first professional fight? Uh, I wouldn't call it professional. Huh? I don't know, like, I, I just, I have a huge, huge respect for boxing, mm-hmm. respect for fighters. And I would never call myself professional. But no head guards and that. That takes balls, man. Yeah. To do that shit. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, um, especially the guys you're fighting. It's not as if they're fucking amateurs. Like, they're, they're monsters as well. Like, yeah. Who was the guy you fought? The I fought first Stephen Ward. Yeah. And then Simon Wally. And what was Stephen Ward? He was what, a tough. Was he, yeah, but what was his um, background? Who was he again? Uh, who was he? Uh, he's from UK. He I can't remember his record. But he's a professional boxer, good boxer, um, good movements. Been doing it since he was young. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Who was the one you more. fought in the, the, the ice rink or the ice hockey? Was ice it, hockey. Yeah, was it an ice rink you were fighting in? Sorry, I seen a boxing match, but it looked as if it was in like a nice rink. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Devon, Devon Lat Yeah, um, he is an arm wrestler, so that was a bit un- unmasked e- event in 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 my my opinion. Well, the, my first two fight was also unmasked because my opponents had had much more experience, but they were also lighter. So I mean, I don't know, we can. See, when you do the fights in Eddie Hall, because the, the fight, you were supposed to fight Eddie in the 18th, he watched the fight back, he wasn't a fight in it because of the injury, he watched it back. Mm-hmm. Do you watch those videos when he's watching videos of you talking about your fight? I've actually seen that, yeah. And, it, and it's funny, it's easy to like sit down and, and criticize people and what he does at home. And and um, he's been saying online that I... I, I my punches are weak and he wouldn't be scared for, to get punched like with my power and and um okay that's fine Eddie like like say all you want um you better you better be standing tall after after those six rounds if not you're gonna look bad with everything you said he's been talking he's been very loud and saying this and that saying that my technique is awful and I'm weak and my punches, is, punches do not hurt. Okay, Ari, that's fine. Say all you want. We'll see. Do you think after the fight, though, with the last four years, all the cheating allegations, they're not really... Um, all, everything that's been said between both of you is like... Do you think he's can move on, squash the beef, and then that's it done? Or do you think there'll be like a rematch or more shit talk all behind that? You know, I've actually moved on, even though I've, I don't like the guy, obviously, when, when, when someone, yeah, I don't like the guy. Uh, but, you know, I've moved on since 2017. He hasn't. He's still there. He's still grumpy. He's still angry. Um, and he'll probably never move on 
but I've moved on, so there's nothing for me, me to move on. Like, I just want to beat him up just because I want to beat him up. It's nice when you get, when you're able to, when you dislike someone, you actually can beat them up and it's fucking legal. That's fucking perfect. Like, whoa, so when when she's chasing with me, I can beat this guy up and like, no one can say anything. People can dispose it. Fucking fantastic. <laughs> um, so that's, that's great. Um, but I've moved on and uh, I'll shake his hand after after um after that match. He'll probably he'll probably he'll probably make a darker match film and, and, and he'll probably re remove that handshake probably as well. But that's okay. Um that's okay. He can do whatever he wants. Uh yeah. Did you feel targeted when all that shit kind of went on? Like it looked as if you never shake, shook his hand and Definitely. Like sober, I got that? messages every single day from fans saying that they were disappointed they didn't shake his hand this and that and that and like I can't be answering everyone and I'm not gonna make fucking excuses I'm not gonna come up with something you know if you believe that fucking nonsense you believe it then fucking unfollow me and I don't fucking give a fuck I am not I don't need to give you an explanation yeah see when you were you started how did this sparring session with Conor McGregor become about um uh, well I was filming in uh, Belfast City and um and um he obviously is from Dublin was training for a fight he was training for one of his biggest fights I mean, it was just Alto and a good friend of mine, Gunnar, Gunnar, Gunnar Nelson, was was training with him in a, in a training camp, and I knew that. So I sent him a message, say, "Hey, I'm in I'm in Belfast City. Can I come? Can I uh, just I have a free day? Can I come hang out? Sure, we're training this day. Do you want to come hang out? We can. I'm like, sure. So I went. Was the session? We took some pictures. We chilled. Went did some grappling a little bit, and then afterwards we 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 um. Um, did some sauna and it was good times. Did they try and hit you hard? No. Like, did they not try and kick you in the belly or something or punch you in the belly? What yeah. happens if you in a real fight? Obviously, with his combat skills, he's a, a world athlete. Like he's next level superstar after mm -hmm. that Aldo fight. But used to coming together and, and really having a fight. If you grab him, obviously he's, he's finished. But do you would you take your chances fighting somebody that way? No. Nah. Silly. Yeah. It wouldn't look good for my for me. I wouldn't do that. Like a lot a lot of guys say you should fight a lot of guys keep saying telling me you should fight Logan Paul. I feel like he's too small. Too small for me to fight. Even though it'd be good for my profile. He's a he's a he's a superstar. Um but I mean if if he, if he would call me out, I wouldn't say no, but I'm not gonna call him out. I think for those um like Logan and Jake Paul, I think what they're doing is unbelievable. I think it's great ah. for the sport. I think they're making millions. There are a couple of young kids, and it's for anybody that's looking for inspiration, understand all the shit talk they do, but it's business. People need to understand that they're creating a platform. Look how big they are. They're fighting world champions, possibly Mike Tyson, one's flop Mayweather. What's your opinions on the... What's your opinions, first of all, on Logan Paul? Because I know you've been on his podcast. Um, I think he's a great guy. I like the guy. Cool guy. Smart guy business guy um, doing well for himself and um, good for him and if he called you out for a fight you would accept yeah I mean that would be a fun fight like I wouldn't call him out because I feel like it's kind of silly you know he's smaller lighter but he call, if he calls me out that's a different story I think he's got a set of balls on him I think they both can fight anyway like I think they would I think they don't give a fuck mm -hmm. I honestly do like you've heard Jake Paul saying that he wants to fight Canelo <laughs> it's kind of silly huh yeah but he would he I, I think would. I think he would yeah. not maybe tomorrow but maybe in a few years yeah but they're getting 10, 15 million a fight it's unbelievable what those two yeah. kids have achieved like, it's, it's unbelievable I, I genuinely respect that like people can what they can achieve and get themselves yeah. into world stardom by fighting yeah. professional fighters it's unbelievable but yeah. if he, if Jake if Logan called you out then you would accept no bother but you think you would take a it'd be about a billion if you called him out yeah I think so for sure <laughs> wouldn't you agree wouldn't yeah. you agree it's kind of it is a different story if he calls me out. Yeah, it's unbelievable. What about Jake Paul? Who's who's that? Who's he fighting? 
Oh, Jake Paul is fighting Tommy uh, Fury. Tommy Fury, yeah. 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 The kids are on 10, 15 million a fight. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So see, after you won, we never spoke about it, but in 2018, you won in World um, Strongman. What was going through your mind? How was that feeling for you? I mean, it was uh, a relief, um, a big relief to finally achieve your goal, to win something that big. Um, I worked really hard for it for many years. Was on the podium, podium since 2012. Uh, my first ever World Strongman competition was back in 2011. Been in the finals every single year that I competed at the World Strongman. So it was a big, big relief. Um, and yeah, like it was 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 good. But um, you know, I'm that kind of guy. You know, even though I. I, I see I achieve my goals I, do, I don't just sit down and I stop I, I start to think right away okay I achieved this what's next I don't really give myself a mess break to celebrate or do things I just like I won great what's next I'm a bit crazy there how long do you enjoy it for a day two days do you have a beer or do you just eat what you want for a couple of days I might have actually, when I think about it, I remember we went back to the hotel. We got a table at the hotel. Didn't even go out. I had a table at the hotel. Um, and I think I had maybe had a glass of wine with my coats and my family at last max. And then I went to bed. That's that celebration time. That's my celebration. How your your wife as well? She must be a great woman then to be then. Did you meet in Canada? She was a waitress. Yep. And uh, the support does that help from your wife and then obviously your son now to then back you to just let you do what you've got to do to achieve what you're achieving. She is super supportive, super understanding, and she would never say no to me. Like if I tell her I'm going for a camp, she says okay. Like she's a very supportive, understanding wife, and she's just great. She's like she's the best. And that's a great thing to then be doing what you're doing because there's no pressure, no bullshit, no nagging. Just understand what you're doing. Understand what you're doing for the kid. Like mm -hmm. I support you 100. percent She understands 100 percent, and um, which is great. I, I I couldn't ask for a better wife. Um, but obviously it's hard we have a luckily we have a good support system at, at home as well um, like you guys know my fans know I'm very close to my family we have a home in Iceland a house and um, uh, my 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 sisters and my mom are just like always just 10 minutes away so if she ever needs help they're always there yeah What's the plans for the future, brother? Where's Ford go? Like you've done, you've seemed to have achieved so much at 32 years old. Like the acting career, strongman, boxing events. Like after the the whole fight, what's on the agenda for you? Have you got big plans? You're going to rest. Eventually, take that vacation. <laughs> I might take a two. Maybe, hopefully, hopefully. I wanna, I wanna say, I wanna. I I can't promise. I want to in my heart and for my wife. I want to take two weeks off, but I can't promise because I'm I'm just I'm I'm crazy like that. Uh -huh. um, if I'm able to take two weeks off, that'd be nice. And then you know, I'm really enjoying boxing. Actually, I'm really enjoying boxing, and I have I'm always a busy guy. I have a lot of things lined up, work wise, um, but I I, I could def definitely could see myself doing more boxing. I definitely could see myself spending more time with Billy here, doing more camps and fighting more. You must be fucking crazy, brother, if you want to spend more time here. <laughs> <laughs> you must have Scottish in your blood yeah. somewhere, brother. Yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. I want to do everything so I can get to fuck from here. So <laughs> <I do. laughs> I'm crazy, that's true. <laughs> you must be, brother. Like Just before we finish up, though, like, who would you like to fight then if if you're enjoying it so much? Who, who's, in your, who's on the, your eye line? 
you know what? I haven't I haven't gotten there yet. Um, one step at a time, one goal at a time. I want to knock Eddie Hall out. After that, I'll sit down with my team, with my coach. We'll see what's uh, open, what's available, and we'll take a decision from there. Is the UFC or WWE not come calling yet? I mean, there's a lot of things that have been, you know, a lot of offers throughout the years. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't do UFC, to be honest with you. Um, I'll, I'll stick to boxing. I'll stick to boxing. Just before we finish up, brother, give me a prediction for the fight with Eddie Hall in March. Uh, a predi prediction? I truly believe that I'm able to finish him in third, fourth round with an uppercut. Uppercut or body shot? Is that your strongest shot? Uh, I have a lot of... <laughs> Talking like I'm so good a lot of great <laughs> shots <laughs> but you know I, I can I, I can hurt him in a lot of different ways so we'll see yeah good um, last question brother for anybody that's watching maybe going through a bit of struggle in life or want to achieve something mm. what advice would you give for them um, remember you're not alone um, things get hard with everyone for myself for you for anyone out there don't give up and if you ever feel like you need help, seek it. And God bless you. All the best to you and your family. How for? Absolute pleasure, brother, for giving me the time. You. I very much enjoyed that. And I can't wait to see what you do for the future. But good luck for your fight in March. I'll be watching. Thank you, my friend. And Take thanks, care. Billy Boy. And thanks to your dad, cameraman. Take care, everyone. Take care, guys. Bye. All the best.